I'm Natalie from Six Man. I'm playing the role of Andy Levine right now, and I just want to say thank you so much for being here. So much so that you came into this vacation in total and complete blend phase. That's amazing. This this room is so incredibly packed out, so thank you so much for that. And our entire team was very excited to put together this special experience for you. So on behalf of Andy and Six Man, we really hope that you enjoy this show. Thank you.
do this in between the, the boat rocking and the actual opportunity. I hope I don't throw up all over everybody. <laughs> it was a rocky day though, wasn't it? Yes. What's with that? Where are these people driving this thing? I have not seen them yet and it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biscuits. Basically, I, I don't think I should be giving any kind of advice to anybody. I'm pretty dumb and I'm 26, um, but I'm still figuring stuff out. So, um, But I guess if I was going to say anything to anybody, this might be it.
Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue. Then we'll whistle and we'll fish in heaven. Trench. Used to bust my knuckles on a monkey wrench. I go to town and drink, give the girls a pinch. I don't think they ever even notice me. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us, we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue. And we'll whistle and we'll go fishing in the heaven. Fish and whistle. Whistle and fish, eat everything that they put on your dish. When we get there, we'll make a big wish that we never have to do this again. Again, again. On my very first job, I said thank you and please. It made me scrub a parking lot down on my knees. Then I got fired for being scared of bees. They only give me 50 cents an hour. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us, we'll forgive you. We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue. And we'll whistle and go fishing in the heaven. Fish and whistle, whistle and fish. Eat everything that they put on your dish. When we get through, we'll make a big wish that we never have to do this again. kicks into Christmas season of oh, the whole damn family. And uh, so uh, I was getting ready to do the whole damn family one, one December and this little girl comes up to me with her buddy and uh, they want to take me out in the parking lot and get me high. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, gee, uh, thanks for the... I've got, no thanks. Yeah, thanks for no thanks. I had to go up, uh, we had to get the whole damn family going. So, uh, <laughs> uh, we got a picture taken together, and the next thing I know, uh, I'm over at my record company, Old Boy Records, and uh, I hear a tape, and it's Casey singing this song about how she liked the burden one with John Fry. <laughs> in my quest, but here I am, so I guess that means something. <laughs> um, it takes a while, bro. I'm convinced. <laughs> well, maybe one of these days I'll convince you. Um, so, uh, so we were running through songs yesterday, and he said, hey, what about that song, John Prime? You gonna do it? And I was like, God, no. I was like, I didn't write it thinking I'd be sitting next to the guy that the title was called. <laughs> I can't figure out what I like so much about that song. I think 
figured I'd bust it out tonight. <laughs> but you've got to forgive me if I start crying. I'll try not to. But yeah, this is one of the first songs I wrote when I moved to Nashville. And I was honestly listening to a lot of his music. Um, a friend turned me on and said, you've got to hear this guy named John Prime. And I just, I fell in love with it. And so, he's been a big inspiration. All right.
to escape reality and you may see me today with an illegal smile it don't cost very much but it lasts a long while won't you please tell the man I didn't kill anyone I know I'm just trying to have me some fun
say that you're watching the birds out the window. Well, I got a bird you can watch. <laughs> you ain't gotta act like you're borrowing eggs just to see if my dishes are washed.
Hey, we're just up here singing. Just kidding. This is a song I wrote for uh, a movie. Uh, all right. See if you went straight from Blockbuster. I didn't think anybody <laughs> I was in the movie. That's how I got to have a song in the movie. It's not like I'm in a movie every day, but I've only done two, but I played the same part in both movies. <laughs> I was a brother-in-law with low self-esteem. <laughs> mm. I'm very much of a stretch. <laughs> so uh, I played uh, Billy Bob Thornton's brother. And, uh, Andy Griffith was our dad. And it was, that was great to be able to work with Andy Griffith and hear those stories for month while we were shooting, you know, uh, heard a whole lot of Don Knott stories. <laughs> so, uh, uh, he, was, he was a wonderful fellow, Andy, but, but uh, just to have Andy play your dad in a movie, um, I feel like I'm uh, Opie's stepbrother. <laughs> so somewhere, uh, Billy Bob said, well, you got to bring your guitar along here while we're shooting the movie to entertain the troops while we're doing this whole thing. Just all the movies are about is just sitting around and waiting and waiting and waiting and then you shoot for five seconds and the day's over. <laughs> so, um, Billy Bob says, you need to write something for the end of the movie, something that we can roll the credits over. I thought, wow, this is my big change. <laughs> <laughs> so I loosely based this on some of the characters in uh, the movie and the rest of it I stole. <laughs> Crossing her legs is funny. She looks down her nose at money. She gets it on like the Easter bunny. She's my baby, I'm her honey. I'm never gonna let her go. He ain't got late in the month of sunnies. Caught it on once and he was sniffing money. Ain't too sharp, but he gets things done. Sitting on a rainbow against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. And we're gonna spike our noses right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. Catch up on her scrambled legs. Swears like a sinner when she shaves her legs. She takes a lick and keeps on taking. Never gonna let her go. He's got more balls than a big brass monkey. He's a whack dog weirdo and a love bug junkie. Sly as a fox and crazy as a loon. Payday comes and he's a howling at the moon. And he's my baby. I don't be me. Mm-hmm. 
Got him confused, got him muscles in his head. He never been used. Thinks he owns half of this town. Started drinking heavy, got a big red nose. Beat his old lady with a rubber hose, and he took her out to dinner. Bought her new clothes. It's the way that the world goes round. That's the way that the world goes around. You up one day, the next you down. It's a half an inch of water. You think you're gonna drown? That's the way that the world goes round. Maybe we'd go to a party once together or something. <laughs> you know, 
They put me up a song right in the spot about the food there, just to kind of impress her, you know. But somehow I knew that couldn't be. Because I, you see, I keep this file cabinet at home. I managed to keep it through uh, three marriages. It's not easy to hang on to anything. Anyway, all I'm keeping this file cabinet are words that I would never use in a song. It's a lot of it, one of them. So I looked directly at her and I said, uh, you know, you might have me confused with some other singer-songwriter. Somebody like maybe uh, Jimmy Butler or something. He sings about food. She said, no, John, it was you, and I wish you'd just sing the song. I said, well, how's it go? And she said, it's a happy enchilada, and you think you're going to drown. That's the way the world goes around me up one day. The next you down, it's a happy enchilada.
like it black, some like it green. Nobody's everybody's favorite, so you might as well just make it how you please. Cause you can't be everybody's cup of tea. Why would you want to be?
two of my friends, uh, Shane McNally and Brandy Clark. They wrote a lot of the records with me. And yeah, if you don't know their stuff, well, first of all, you could probably turn a radio on and hear, um, hear it um, immediately, but you should check out their own stuff. Brandy Clark made a, an amazing record called 12 Stories, and it's one of my favorites um, that's been put out. So um, this song started out as, as a sort of a poem. We had a friend that was going to Paris for like four months, she was leaving everything behind. She didn't know the language. She was just going to go study. And she was terrified. Um, and I gave her this little necklace that was a little arrow. Then on the card, I wrote something really dumb. It was just a little poem. And it said, make lots of noise, kiss lots of boys, or it said, smoke lots of joints or something, and follow your arrow wherever it points. Um, and so I saved that, and I always thought it would make a cool song. And, um, and I ended up writing it with, uh, with Shane and Brandy. And actually, I got a lot of shit because of the word joint in the song. But literally, there was no other rhymes. We went through every single word, every single possibility, and it really was the only one that rhymed that made sense. And it's also really fun to me because, so the record, this last, the last record that I made, um, it was done, you know, and you get pressure from your record label, come on, we need to turn it in, it's time to put it out. And I had written two, um, two songs, and I had to stop the presses, and I was like, no, wait, these two songs, they really represent where my head is at right now. They have to make it on this record. And they were like, fine, I'm really annoyed by it. Arrow was one of them in this other song called Silver Lining that was on the record. And um, it got one woo. Yay. <laughs> Someone knew it. Um, and I turned in the song, and they were like, huh, it's cute, but It'll never, ever be a single, ever. It can't, it won't, don't even think about it. And uh, came time to pick the next single and I just said, I really think this needs to be it. And I think it went up to number 48 on the chart and then had to crash into a bunch of flames by radio standards. But I'm really proud that it got Song of the Year this year. That's it. If you save yourself from marriage, you're a whore. If you don't save yourself from marriage, you're a horrible person. If you won't have a drink, then you're a prude. But they'll call you drunk as soon as you Say what? 
Take 